What is going on, fellas? In today's book review, we got The Manhattan Project by Jeff Hughes. All about the big science, about the atomic bomb, and all the history that came into it. More so the nuclear bombs. But uh, it's very cool. I remember hearing about something like that, code name like Manhattan Project, Operation Northwoods, all that jazzy stuff on Joe Rogan. But I never dug deep into it and found the origin. So here we go. UA1 at CERN. CERN is like the, you know, that big circle where they shoot particles at crazy speeds to find out information over in like Europe. So UA1 at CERN detected what was happening when you accelerate particles and have them smash into each other in the late 1980s. CERN located in Europe, Large Hadron Collider, 27 kilometer tunnel, 12 nations combined to make CERN. In the United States, we have the SSC that was being built in Texas, a superconducting super collider the size of two football fields. The first kind of experiments were done on small tabletops, now huge underground facilities. The main reason for these experiments was to develop nuclear weapons. The Manhattan Project brought together thousands of scientists, engineers, and technicians in secret to work on and produce the atomic bomb. At its height, the project employed 130,000 people and was the equivalent in sense to the entire American automobile industry. The cost $2 billion, the goal was to respond to Hitler's acquiring nuclear weapons. They were ultimately dropped on Japan, destroying the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and hastening the end of the world or war. So I really got to look into that on like why they bombed Japan, because I think it's kind of messed up just to bomb a whole bunch of civilians and stuff and killing a lot, a lot of people. You know, I don't think that's just me. I think that's probably everyone, right? The big five M's, money, manpower, machines, media, and military. HGP, Human Genome Project. Leviatha of Partstown, a huge telescope that was made in the 1840s. With telescopes, they could see how the universe worked better and saw that space was expanding. In, I want to say, 1895, they used pumps and compressors on other large-scale mechanical equipment to create temperatures of 15 degrees Celsius to liquefy gases. They invented a double-walked flask with a vacuum between the walls to hold his liquefied gases. Now, that invention is used in today's thermoflasks. The cold made transporting food and being able to preserve it longer. Hands I want to say Geiger, Geiger, G-E-I-G-O-R, developed both optical and electrical methods for counting particles. I don't know how these people come up with these things. I always say to my friends, I'm like, dude, if me, you, and two other people were stuck in the woods for a million years, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to take all the raw materials and make a cell phone. It's like, I don't even know how, like, do you take a picture, send an email? I don't even know how to create all these things you can't even see with your eyes. It's like, I'm not, I know I'm not that smart because I can't even do any of those things. Yet these people are out here somehow being able to make a machine that can see things that are smaller than the human eye and then make them work and do crazy things. It's like so mind boggling to me. Rutherford shot particles from a radioactive substance of thin sheets of gold foil. Mostly particles pass, but some bounce back. They postulated the existence of the nucleus, a tiny electrically charged core containing most of them, most of the mass in the atom, and he called the, uh, those protons. 1914, they started working on chemical weapons. 5,500 scientists approximately started working on that. In 1934, the Italian physicist Enrico Fermes and a group of his co-workers discovered elements bombarded with neutrons could be turned into isotopes of other elements. Artificial radioactivity can be used to treat cancer and other diseases. So basically, if you go down to the very small levels of different things and somehow you shoot a bunch of neutrons at one element, you can transfer them and make new elements that I guess don't exist in nature or that already exist in nature. Now you can do it manually without having to wait for those things to occur. When you start doing that, things get weird because then you can start making, again, insane weapons with these things. In the 1930s, they found out that they could use radio waves to detect objects where they bounce off, creating what is known as radar. And radar is pretty cool. I remember playing Call of Duty. We got the spy plane where you can see the enemies are at. So they'll shoot electromagnetic waves at certain people. And then depending on where the wave is, or let's say, for example, there's a plane in the sky, 
if the waves don't hit anything in the sky, it means nothing's there, but it hits the plane, then it can come back and be like, yo, plane right there. Nuclear physics developed rapidly in the 1930s. In addition to construction of ever larger machines for ripening uh, apart atomic nuclei, scientists used the neutron discovered by James Chadwick at the Covindia in 1932 as a tool to explore nuclear structure. By bombarding the nuclei of target elements with energetic neutrons and analyzing the, pro uh, the products, neighboring elements in the periodic tables, they could deduce the nuclear transformations that they had taken place and therefore work out something of the structures of the various nuclei involved. So again, I'm not sure if they make up new particles that didn't, or new things or elements to the periodic table or not. Gotta look into that more, but that stuff is again mind boggling. December 1938, uranium. When bombarded by neutrons, apparently produced barium, an element half of its weight, uh, Huan or H A H N, a guy called this a horrifying conclusion because it went against all previous experience and knowledge in the nuclear physics and chemistry. Like anything else, people be learning something new every single day. A kilogram of uranium can make a devastating nuclear explosion. Uranium quantities necessary to create a huge bomb in a short period of time is now possible. A five kilogram bomb, around 10 pounds, could have the same effect, so a five kilogram uranium bomb could have the same effect as several thousand tons of dynamite and would release enough radiation to be fatal to living beings long after the explosion. That's one of the weird things is how not only do you devastate everything, you kind of destroy the land and everything with the radioactivity afterwards. Uranium plutonium was piled December in 19, I forgot the word pile meant, it's just like they, I guess, piled different things on top of each other and have massive amounts. So uranium plutonium was piled during December 1942. Bush Roosevelt made industrial scale plutonium. They put a hundred million towards a plutonium plant and a hundred million product, hundred million toward, or 160 million towards production plants and heavy waste or water production plant, 20 mil. So they made one, I think, for for uranium and then uranium plutonium, and then they had a water plant. Total was near 400 million, an electromagnetic isotope separation plant for uranium. An experimental pile and plutonium production plant were built in Clinton, Tennessee. The equipment needed 86,000 tons of solar as an electrical conductor, which was supplied by a loan from the U.S. Treasury. So I think it's insane how they can just manufacture all this stuff very, very quickly, I guess. <clears throat> but the I know gold is a really good with because it's rare and it's a really good conductor of electricity and looks good and really appealing. But the fact that they got to get 86,000 tons of solver to be a conductor is an, I feel like that's an insane amount of solver that they got to use towards that. Um, July 16th, 1945, the first nuclear bomb was tested. August 6, 1945, the B-29, so I guess it's some type of plane, uh, by a guy, Unan Gay, dropped the uranium gun-type weapon over the Shima Hospital in Hiroshima, equivalent 15,000 tons of TNC and 20, 280,000 civilians, 45,000 military, and 78,000 were killed outright. 37,000 missing as radiation effects sit in deaths were at 140,000 at the end of the year. By 1950, 200,000 people were dead. And it was called the Little Boy Bomb. Then three days later, the B-29 on August 9th, 1945, a thing called a Fat Man Bomb, exploded over Nagasak with a blast later estimated at 22,000 tons of TNC. 70,000 died by 1950 and 140,000 uh, by 1950. The Japanese began to surrender negotiations days after these attacks. They surrendered in 1945, August 15th. All the top universities and technology institutes were getting government contracts to make weapons and do research and make new inventions for the military. So a lot of these things, they all got funded by, I guess, the government and certain, they have a certain budget they can spend, but they'd pay hundreds of millions, if not tens of millions, to, or tens of millions to each university because they had graduates and different things or they'd have people there and doing a bunch of different research projects with these universities so they got guaranteed government contracts spent hundreds of millions on these people to then come up and make all these different weapons and different scientific things for the military 
And then during the process, they definitely found a bunch of different things. Just like when they say, quote unquote, they made crazy telescopes to look into space and they find out something and they make the invention of something else because of space. Like I want to say some guy made some crazy experiment and made like some type of a thing that we use every single day. Like, I guess like, let's say for example, like they made the microwave probably wasn't that one, but that just someone made the microwave because they found out something in space. So you might spend money on space when it's like, why would I do that when I could, we have homeless people that we need to feed and do things on earth when those things can move over into new inventions that do help humanity in the whole, which I find to be pretty swell. And in 1963, the federal funding for just high energy physics was 60, 163 million. NASA gave 221 million of its budget to 175 institutions from 1963 to 1971. In 1961, 8.4 billion on scientific research, 10% of the US government budget. So again, like even though it's a scientific research 8.4 billion was, the different there's different types obviously like high energy is one high energy physics would be one, there's a million different types. Uh, in 1980, the superconducting super collider, the SSC, cost the US four to six billion and it goes 60 times more acceleration than CERN. 160 times larger than the biggest existing machine and required 16,553 acres of land to be acquired by over 700 different landowners. Thermonuclear fusion, a harnessing of the energy of a, heart, or of a hydrogen bomb for energy slash electricity. So ideally, that would be amazing. Imagine all that little condensed energy in a little speck of uh, or like a hydrogen bomb. If they were to take off all that energy and be able to use it for electricity to power houses and all the things we have normally uh, apparently they spent billions of dollars and things trying to figure out how to do that but i don't think they're able to do that yet but that would be amazing just like apparently if you harness one one day of the sun shining or my bad one hour of the sun shining on earth if we were to take all the energy we could power all the things we need to a whole year's worth on earth which is pretty insane so if everybody anything like that those are great things for humanity and not bombing other people slash fellow homo sapiens so that's the manhattan project i hope you guys enjoyed the video other than that it's your boy have a good day and